Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In the last episode, we defeated Gert, the vast mechanical monster of Snowhead Temple, and brought spring at last to the mountains of Snowhead. This episode, I'm going to be showing off the various things we can do with the fact that spring has finally come to the mountains. And one of the coolest of such is over here. If we read the sign, it says, Goron Powder Keg Shop. New customers will be tested on proper usage. The Shopkeeper. Those who played Ocarina of Time will recognise the shopkeeper, because there are very few new sprites in this game, or models even, and it is indeed Medigoron. I'm the Goron who sells powder kegs, the most famous product of the Gorons. Want a powder keg? Powder kegs explode with a dain powerful blasts and are very dangerous. Until I have tested you to see if you can use them properly, I can't let you use any on your own. Will you give it a try? If you can destroy the boulder that blocks the entrance to the Goron racetrack near here, Using the powder keg I'm about to give you, I'll give you my approval to carry them. So, he gives us a powder keg. When the powder keg begins ticking faster, that means it's about to explode. Try to blow up the boulder, blocking the Goron racetrack with the powder keg without the powder keg exploding along the way. There's a sign near the racetrack, so keep an eye out for it. When you're finished, come and see me. So, to get it out of here first, we have to basically just- oh, bugger. Get as close as we can to the bottom of this slope, and then roll up after it, having thrown it up there. This one has a fuse of two minutes, as in two um, real life minutes, two in game minutes is like 45.45 seconds, um, I think, or something like that. But it should be enough time. The Goron Race Tag, you've seen where it is technically, you just might not have noticed it. Powder kegs are a very useful thing. We get access to these if we successfully do this trial. They're like bombs on crack, um, they're great. And there's an odd little beta thing here, um, which I will talk about more in a little bit. Something that was meant to be in the game, but seems to have been forgotten, and again seems to have been forgotten from the 3DS version, which I was a little surprised by. The Goron Race Truck, the boulder blocking it, oh, make sure you don't fall into the water here, is up there to the right. So let's just ignore these regular Wolf Foss now, because it's no longer winter there, not white Wolf Foss. Um, this is all green and nice here, but yes, speeder on please, um, let's head up to the Goron Racetrack. So, having got it successfully up here, we slap it down next to that boulder, and the Goron Chief's um, son is here, the Elder even. Ah, Tommy! Now that it's nice and warm out, I'm much, much better. Even if my daddy isn't right beside me, I won't be selfish and cry. So now that spring has come, the Goron Racer should be starting again soon, but... But this rock isn't in the way, and I can't get to see the race. And spring's just started too. I was so excited, but there's nothing I can do. I hate it, I hate it, I want to see it, I want to see it, I want to see the race! Still a whiny bastard. Well, we can either wait for the powder keg to go off manually, or we can detonate it with a suitable spark. You did it! Thanks a lot! You've also changed into a Kokiri boy, but let's ignore that. He's going right in. Whatever you do here, don't go right in. It's a trap. Uh, what we actually need to do is head back to the powder keg cellar to let him know we passed the test. And Tattle says this, I don't think she said this in the original. We passed the exam! Victory! Come on, let's go tell that big Goron, because I think a lot of people did did miss that. So, let's head back over to Goron Village. It looks like you managed to succeed. Knowing your skills, I feel fine letting you handle powder kegs on your own. It was bad of me to put you through such a dangerous test. I want you to take this as my apology. And he gives you, weirdly enough, a powder keg. You can only carry one at a time. If you shoot them with an arrow, they'll explode as soon as they hit, so be careful. And this gives us an explosive exam, weirdly not part of the bomb business, because we concluded that last time. And I always found this very strange, that we can now buy powder kegs from him at any time, and we can buy powder kegs from the bomb shop in Clocktown. And I always found it really bizarre that he doesn't give you anything to show that. Like, he does People talk online about, oh yeah, you need to pass the pow powder keg certification exam, but he doesn't give you a pow powder keg certificate or something that comes back in time with you that would let you get them in another cycle. If you were to re play the Song of Time now and start a new cycle and just go to the bomb shop in Clocktown, they'll just sell you a powder keg saying, ah, yes, you're a Goron, so you'll be fine. It's like, it seems that his, but if you hadn't done his quest there, they would say, oh no, sorry, you're not certified. It's bizarre that it seems to require that without there actually being, a, being an obvious check for it. Anyway, with that done, we have got access to powder kegs, so they are off the visualizer, and now let's head through to the Goron Racetrack. This can be one of the most fun minigames in the game, or one of the most infuriating. That's all I'll say. 
Ah, Dami, we've been waiting for you. See, everyone's restless because they can't wait to enter. You're going to enter, aren't you? You have to. I want to show everyone how Dami races. If your magic power runs low, charge it up with the green jars on the course. So, time for some Goron races with fantastic music. Oh, there we go. So as I said, we'll be, we'll be spiked up the whole time, so we will technically need magic. My first bit of advice for Goron races is don't worry about magic. Um, if you've got the double magic meter, as I have, you'll be fine. Uh, you just need to get, grab every, like, one in four of these batches of jars. If you look at the magic, it takes ages to recharge. So you really don't need to worry about it too much. Focus more on staying on the inside of turns. That's really the key for this, is... is... Cutting corners. Ah. You'll notice if you get hit, if anyone gets hit, they start flashing. Get hit again and you'll just lose your momentum entirely. There are a number of different ways to approach Goron races. You can try and take out other um, competitors by kind of rolling into them at the right time. Or you can just try and race yourself. I tend to uh, go for the try and race myself thing. Ignoring other competitors and just trying to do, do my best. Cut off as many corners as possible. But it really just just it's 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 pretty random, all things considered. Um, hopefully, I will be fortunate. Uh, I'm as I say, generally sticking to the insides of corners tends to work nicely. You've got until the end of the first. Oh, I think I've nailed it. Dang diggity done it. You've got until the end of the second day to beat it. Oh, did he just sneak ahead of me? If so, I'm gonna kill a man. Him specifically, actually. That was great. I knew you were the fastest Goron Dami. Yes, clearly nailed it. I was sure you'd get first place. Future Doctor, put a photo finish on that. I think that was incredibly close. This is from Daddy, it's the prize. Oh no, look! It's gold dust! Oh yes. So, with that, we won Goron Racer's Rock and Roll, and we can continue with a Sharp of Sword. And this is why it matters that you do this before the end of the second day, because now we can give our sword to the Mountain Smithy and have them reforge it into a better sword. In order to get that reforged sword in time, we need to deposit it on the second day so we can collect it at sunrise on the third day. And this is why it matters that you do Snowhead on the first day, because you need a day for them to turn it into the Razor Sword, and then a day for them to upgrade it further. If at any point, if you haven't got Spring by the end of the first day, you've not got the time for that full upgrade cycle to happen. And the final one they give you, the final sword, is indeed um, travels through time with you, so we'll be on the Visualizer. So here, this time he says, your sword has already been resarpened into the Razor Sword. Unless, do you want me to take your sword stronger? For that, I'll need gold dust. Do you have any? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, it's worth noting as well. You must have noticed from the visualizer, perhaps, but we got a bottle of gold dust. That is, we got a bottle of gold dust, which is brilliant. If I use it to reforge your sword, there'll even be some left. All right, just for you, I'll do this for free, but don't tell anyone. Sounds like you're not doing it for free. Sounds like you're doing it for my excess gold dust. Anyway, come back tomorrow morning. Wonderful. So with that, I guess there's not really a huge amount to do at the moment, other than skip to the dawn of the next day. Oh, I'm doing the Song of Soaring anyway, with the Song of Double Time. So on the dawn of the final day, we can just get from them the Gilded Sword. Newly forged, our sword is better than ever and will never break. So this is... So the Razor Sword does double damage, but gets broken. This does triple damage and also has extra range and travels back through time with you. So of course it goes on the Visualizer and it's bloody handy to have. We can't make a sword stronger than that. No matter how many times you lose it, it'll never lose its edge. Try it. I also use up most of the gold dust. Just a tiny bit was left, so I got rid of it for you. Ugh, you idiot little bastard. But you'll see, yeah, it's got a slightly longer reach than the Kukuri Sword, but it's also just very bloody powerful. And yeah, it's, it's a shame. I don't think it looks quite as nice as the Razor Sword. I think the Razor Sword with like the double edge on it actually looks really cool, but you just never get it for long because it doesn't travel in time with you and it only and it only has 100 hits in it, so it just, it's really actually unwise to use it. As you can see, the moon's pretty much about to fall, so I'm just going to go back, do my usual, back to Clock Town, deposit my remaining rupees, and then return to dawn of the first day. The quickest way to the ocean is through the west gate. Yes, I know that, but we're not going to be doing that for a while anyway. Um, for now, uh, we've got two brief things to gather before we head on with things. Obviously, we're not doing anything involving springtime in the mountains now, because the mountains of Snowhead are now frozen over again, because because we've completely reset. Um, we've used the Song of Time. But, of course, we still have got our trusty Razor Sword. Not trusty, we've never used it before, but I will soon. 
Um, first off, we need to go over the top here and gather my favourite chest with a silver rupee in it. And now with that in hand, I think we need to head as if going to the Astral Observatory, because there's something we can get along there that we could have got before, I just haven't really shown it off so far. So if you look on the map here, you'll see to the left there's actually a treasure chest marked on it. Again, we could have got this at any point earlier, I just hadn't because I because I hadn't. Um, because there's just an explosive wall through here. It's dawn on the first day, so we haven't picked up any bombs yet, but we can use the Blast Mask um, to get to a chest containing another 100 rupees. So you can get both of those pretty much every time you, you play the Song of Time. So handy, especially considering there is a reward which we're going to need to get one day for having deposited 5,000 rupees in our bank account. The sooner we start on that process, really the better. Anyway, we do actually need that money for something. We need to head over to the bomb shop in West Clocktown. East Clocktown. West Clocktown. I hate East and West. So, there's the regular bloke here who sells bombs, but this bloke to the right here, a Goron bloke. Oh, of all places. You're a Goron, so you should be able to carry a powder keg, right? So wouldn't you buy a powder keg for 50 rupees? It's all weird, the powder keg stuff. So he... He'll just um, give you them as long as you've done the um, powder keg certification at some point in the past, uh, even though you don't have anything to prove from it. And he also sells them at 50 rupees, whereas Medigoran himself sells them for 100, which I always thought slightly bizarre. Anyway, what I'm going to do here is deposit my remaining rupees, because we don't really need them at the moment, and soar over to Milk Road. So, we have a massive use for powder cakes at the moment here. See this massive rock that your man's working on breaking through? We know he doesn't break through until the dawn of the final day. And by that point, something terrible has happened and all of the animals from the ranch are gone. Here, with a powder cake, we can break through as early as we want. As early as, in this case, at 9am on the first day. Let's drop that there. And if we talk to him, of course, he says, What? I thought I could break it! You can, it'll just take you two days, you know. So, let's go through to a nice new Romani ranch. And so you'll notice this time there's actually cows around. There's also there's someone new here, um, tending to the cows. This is... Come on. Can I not talk to her as a Goron? Is she a racist too? Is everyone in this, this, this... Oh, there we go. Oh my, did you come from town? Yes, I did. Then that means... Milk Road is open to traffic! Good, I can deliver milk to town now! Welcome to Rani Ranch, birthplace of Chateau Romani. Enjoy yourself. So, this gives us Romani's sister, Creamier, terrible name, the ranch owner. Um, and yes, now there are actually cows around because they've not been rustled yet. And that is indeed exactly what we're going to be looking into at the moment. If we head over to here... L look! Isn't that your horse? And yes, you get this cutscene every time, despite the fact Tattle knows it's your horse. But this time, rather than sitting despondently, um... Not Creamia, who's the other one? Romani is running around, attempting to shoot at this thing, whatever it is. Well, that's nice seeing how far away the moon is compared to when I watched it destroy the world from here. Anyway, if we talk to her, she says, Hey, who are you? I'm Romani. I was given the same name as the ranch. What's your name? My name is The Doctor? The Doctor? That's a nice name, but how about Grasshopper? That's the name Romani gives you. See, you're wearing green clothes and you pass her around and you walk, so Grasshopper it is. Romani was practicing for tonight. Tonight. They are coming. They. They come at night. Every year when the carnival approaches. They come riding in a bright shining ball. A whole lot of them come down. And then, they come to the barn. My older sister won't believe me, but Romani must protect the cows. Hey Grasshopper, I'm recruiting for an assistant right now. You're a boy, won't you try? What the fuck does that mean? Great, now that's the spirit, Grasshopper. Now, okay then, I'm going straight into my strategy. They'll appear all over the ranch. They'll aim for that barn and they'll approach it slowly, so hit them with arrows so they can't get in. You got that, and you mustn't leave the ranch. Grasshopper, let's practice right away. 
There are 10 ghost shaped balloons in the ranch, so you need to hurry and burst them all. If you take more than two minutes, you're out. The current record is one minute. Are you ready? So, crucial thing here is, look at the map you've got on the bottom of your screen. That will show you where all of the ghosts are unpopped, and you can easily just track them down that way. We're of course on a horse, which means control stick to move around, and we can press the A button to go faster. You'll notice on the bottom screen as well, there's six carrots. Press A, you'll use up a carrot and go a bit faster. You'll get a temporary speed boost, and then when it runs out, the carrot will come back. You can use up multiple carrots to keep going faster, but if you use them all up, it'll take quite a while before they all come back. Doing this within the 10 minute, 2 minute time frame is incredibly easy, doing it within the 1 minute is actually pretty straightforward. Just remember, especially when it comes to the real deal of chasing off the cow stealing aliens, yes that's a thing in this game, uh, just remember the minimap is absolutely your friend, that's the main thing you're learning here, Not nothing about horseback archery, you know, trust me for that one. Um, minimap is your friend. Ooh, you bugger! Oh, and also been able to aim remotely competently would also help. Am I going to break a record still? Possibly not. Yes, just. And that was with some heavy cock up. Yeah. Amazing! It's a new record! You two work perfectly together. <laughs> I'll teach Romani's horse calling song to you, Grasshopper. Now you two keep getting, getting along and go practice some more. The horse seems to like this song. Quite why Link doesn't remember that song from Ocarina of Time is slightly baffling, but indeed this is Epona's song, which summons our horse Epona to us. It's Epona's song, a melody signifying the bond you share with Epona, so much so that you lost it. Play it and your beloved horse will come running, even though there's apparently a massive brick in the way. Stand by opponent's side and press A to climb on her back to get off, stop A and press A again, blah blah blah, I explained all of this. When your arrows hit these, they burst into nothing, but the real ones will keep popping up. If they get in the barn, we lose. They run away at the first light of the sun, so we'll have to keep fending them off until then. Did you get that? The operation starts tonight at 2. I'll be waiting by the barn. Don't be late. So, time to learn something new. Protect Romani's cows! Hey, do you think you can remember the time they just told you? If you're worried, you might forget. I can give you a little reminder when the time comes. Just open the bomber's notebook and set alarm from the schedule screen, then set it for whatever time you want me to remind you about. It's good to send them a bit earlier so that you're not late for any of your appointments, but that's really your call to make. I may as well do it. So if we go on to schedule, then we select um, a, a time, and we want to set it for um, assistant ghost stopper. Set an alarm for... Let's say 1am. There we go, your arm has been set. Cool, we'll deal with that next episode for now. Um, yes, we've got access to Epona. Even bafflingly, if I were to use the Song of Time now to kind of restart, and I play the Song of Time anywhere, I play the Song of Time, play Epona's song anywhere, Epona will come and join us, despite the fact that the road is completely blocked off until it's powder caked through by us or chopped through by that, that workman. Apparently Epona will still just come to you. Can't say it makes a great deal of sense to me, but it is useful. Now I've got one final thing to really do this episode, which isn't much really. Um, our main goal is to be is to wait until 2am, but I'm actually going to leave that till next episode for some ghost busting. For now, I just want to show off two things. Number one, where the next area we're heading is. Um, and number two, how our sweet new sword functions in combat, or how well it functions in combat specifically. Here is the entrance to the Great Bay, the Oceans of Termina. We can hop over some of these fences now with Epona, and we can hop over that big one and get there, but I'm not going to do so yet. What I am going to do is head over to that hole that has those Dodongos in and get a sweet bit of finance and show off exactly how nicely the new sword works. Um, so there's a small Dodongo there, and there is a big-ass Dodongo there. So, the razor, the Gilded Sword does triple damage, which basically means with these guys, have them face you, get around behind them, and then shiv their tail in a bit, and they can't actually take a great deal of hits um, from this thing, because this thing just does quite a lot of damage. Um, oh, bugger. I should also probably show off, we've got a special spin attack um, for beating Snowhead Temple. It's probably, there you go, dead already. The special spin attack is probably the least useful of the Stray Fairy rewards, and it's. I'm glad they switched it with the Woodfall one, not only because of how useful it is to have um, double magic meter, but also... I remember certainly gathering all the stray fairies in Woodfall and then being like, you've got a spin attack. I was like, well, that's 
garbage. It just it just doesn't feel worth the effort you've went through to get it. So, so it's good they actually made the first one one, which actually feels genuinely useful. Oh, fire! Um, you can see if you look at my health, you'll see these guys actually can do you a serious bit of health. But also, yeah, two good jump attacks and they are dead with the Gilded Sword, which is pretty nice. And as you noticed, I hope each one drops fifty quid, which is very handy. Um, I kind of can't quite get behind this one. I kind of never really realised before that Dodongos are only have two legs in these games, because I always think of the kind of lizardy like ones in Twilight Princess that have four legs. But, oh, what's Tattle saying? Um, not to interrupt, but wasn't there something you were supposed to be doing about now? What? Don't look at me like that, it's not my fault. Oh, did I set it for... Oh, I set it for 1pm, when it was supposed to be for 1am. Good one, at least that shows you how that works. And also she ran me at half one. What the fuck, woman? What a useless fairy. Weird thing here, we've already got this heart contained. Piece of heart, so if we open it, we just get a regular heart, because that was a piece of heart a while ago. Uh, I should probably set an actual reminder then properly. Uh, no, uh, schedule. There you go, 2 a.m. So I'll set it for 1 a.m. There we go. Smartest. I am. I am the smartest. But yes, an opponent, wherever she is, will always come to you when you play the song, so that's handy to know going forwards, and we're going to hold the episode there, I think. Um, so, thank you very much for watching. Next episode, I suppose, what we're going to be doing is just passing a bit of time. There's a few things I want to do around Terminal Field, mostly involving gathering money. Um, basically just to pass the time, rather than just doing the Song of Double Time, uh, which we could just do till, for the next 12 hours. I can at least go around and get a bit of money. Like, there, that was, that was quite handy. You can just go back into that hole and farm the Dongos repeatedly, because as I say, we will need eventually to have deposited five grand here to get a, uh, a reward relatively late in the game. And we've got 700, so we've got nearly a fifth of it. Um, but yes, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for Stopping the Steely Cow Thief Aliens. I love this game. Thank you very much, and good day.